college football imperialism, but in the ocean? Yep, that's right. We already have a victor representing from each continent, but there are more conferences than continents, if you don't know. So who says a team can't rule over a body of water? Only one rule and one rule only, it's gonna get wet up in here. Pause. What I mean by that is that every game will have rainy conditions since, well, the ocean is full of water and water is wet. There will be not one, but two victors in this episode, one from the Mac and one from the America. Remember these two teams that conquer the oceans get to steal one player from as many teams as they defeat in their journey. And of course they get to bring in two campus legends to join them in the fray for all out world war. Here is a look at the two conferences, American out of the Pacific ocean and the Mac out of the Atlantic ocean. And this is where the fun begins a juiced wheel with 20, six teams who are kicking it off with only the worst team in the FBS, Kent State. Let's find out where the Golden Flashes need to go. Here we go, an extremely exciting matchup that you're all looking forward to, of course. Kent State versus Western Michigan, primetime TV. Big sack here, Kent State with a slam dunk of a play on this wet field. If you're really going to immerse into this and believe that we're playing in an ocean, I need you to believe me. We transported this field from Kent State all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. But yeah, playing true to the worst team in college football, worst team in college football revamped. They are punting it here down 30 to seven with a minute left. It's all about wraps. I mean, look at the difference here. Wow, it was not really close at all. So Bronco fans rejoice and uh, Kent State Golden Flash fans, if there are any of you out there, I'm sorry. Did not take long for Kent State to get done dirty. Was hoping those guys can go on a magical run, but a hey, nonetheless, Let's kick it over to Miami and the Red Hawks. Sending the lads to the left and up. And very nice, we got Eastern Michigan. So the next game played on a Navy aircraft carrier is another blowout of the sort. If you're a Miami Red Hawk fan, you are dreaming right now, and that was a mean stiff. Eastern Michigan, however, has got to be one of the candidates to rebuild first in EA College Football 25. That gray turf and this poor school. Red Hawks driving all the way down here, third and goal. They got the easy touchdown, just padding it on, man. Well, well, if you had Eastern Michigan in this one, you were sorely wrong because Gabbert and the Red Hawks took care of business. Austin Ertl dropping down the hammer on defense. With that victory, the Red Hawks get all of the United States Atlantic coast. A little unfortunate we don't get to see the gray turf in this one, but hey, we're going to keep it moving with a Florida Atlantic game. Where will the Owls land? First game in the American, it's Owls Army. I guess in the American Conference and the MAC, blowouts are commonplace. You're either a good team in your conference or you're just really really bad bryson daly the army quarterback struggling in this one couple costly turnovers he gets some points here but it's too late the owls have been playing some good football all day and they're savages right here fourth and two they're going for it they really don't care already up by 33 congrats to the owls they took care of business today and they're going to be a tough team in the american i believe so the owls did their thing and it's going to lead to another matchup here kicking it off with toledo holy toledo they're going to play bowling green toledo trying to kick into another gear here fourth and one and they couldn't get it oh man are you kidding because they couldn't come through on that last drive they wasted so much time and it's fourth and 15 and what in the world were you thinking with that play Toledo only mustered up 87 passing yards today in Bowling Green's in victory formation somehow some way they got a chance left here with clock expiring it's not like they can get a 10 point play and solid pass connection but uh G to the G, Bowling Green is going to come through on top. Falcons got tested, but they were not to be denied. Don't you just love cranking a giant wheel? Let's see who we get next, and it's going to be Central Michigan. Huskies actually going for it here, fourth and five. That play just held up for so long. I mean, my goodness, Central Michigan had all the time in the world to sniff it out, and they needed that turnover because they're down by two, two touchdowns. Unfortunately for the Chippewas, they're running really low on time, so let's see if they can make it interesting. Third and eight looking for the end zone going across and his receiver dropped it it is slippery out there so grip boost with that drop i mean how much will weather play a big factor in this next game for college football 25 i'm sure it will cause some havoc and be pretty realistic as we see in this one a low scoring affair true to rain games hard to hold onto the ball roll huskies in this one a lot of teams still to play as we're working two conferences at once now let's give a chance to navy army already got done dirty what will happen with Navy. Tough one here against Tulane. This is pretty wild. I just realized Navy and Tulane going at it. These are like the two best suited teams for ocean warfare. Like, come on, think about it. Navy's occupation is out on the waters and Tulane is the green wave. It's a wave. 
Huge conversion on that last fourth down here. Navy getting into the red zone and Tulane defense swallows him. Tulane is actually going to cause some problems, I feel like, in this imperialism. And oh man, he dropped a touchdown in his hands. I have a feeling that won't be the last time we see something like that. Fourth and 15. Do they have it all here for the big play? Yes, they do. Down the field they go. First and goal, stepping up, touchdown. But unfortunately for Navy, one first down here ruins their chance at any comeback. And yep, these guys ran out of chances. Time expired going for a big play on fourth and 15 he's got it all and he will go all the way touchdown navy unfortunately for them they're eliminated what a way to go out in this one with a touchdown so both military schools eliminated pretty early in this one well unfortunately for them the show must go on and now it's tulsa's turn sending them boys down against tulane they're up again tulane feeling a little threatened in this one down by four pratt's gonna step up and take it all the way just at the one funny play on words again tulsa's golden hurricanes versus tulane's green wave these guys are meant for the ocean with big a big third down here up the middle the running back shady clayton is doing his best touchdown dance and the momentum is definitely in the wave side here because it's a huge third and 28 nothing doing just two minutes left in this one another third and goal they want more points and it's a ginormous pick instead that interception was costly boy oh boy he chose a bad time to cough it up and <laughs> coughing it right back up great defensive back play there by number 11 he read that like a book monroe with that last pick i guess braylon braxton didn't want it bad enough because now tulane's running out the rest of the clock and tulane holds on for the win it was a close one here and it could have gone anyway well just like that Tulane all of a sudden 2-0 in this young campaign go ahead and grip it and rip it see where it lies it's gonna be the Charlotte 49ers and they're gonna have to go south so we got a Niners Rice matchup fourth down Rice Owls going with the read option quarterback keeps it and he's got a nice gain for the first down JT Daniels has already made a couple mistakes and this one can't afford another gotta go for some points in a third and eight first down conversion it's first in goal just under three minutes here third and goal honestly if you don't get it here they do so they're right back in this game someone needs to step up as a hero in this one fourth and one a minute 30 to go rice wants a touchdown and they throw a pick instead massive interception the hero is going to come in charlotte's direction the rain was a little too much to bear they're getting seasick out here in the ocean charlotte is scoring it and dagger in it. Congrats to the 49ers. They're going to move on to the next step and their boat is still afloat. Let's keep this thing rolling. We've had a lot of good action so far and Owls are back up. Owls need to continue. I mean, really only one direction up north. That's going to be Temple. Owl v. Owl. Question of the hour right now is who is the better Owl? First in goal, they're doing well right now and that read option is filthy. Touchdown, Owls. Florida Atlantic and these Owls usually better equipped with the rain, I would think, but they're struggling mightily. That sack and turnover is going to cost them the game. Owls managed to hold Hold the Owls to three points. Now they have a little drive going here and okay, any momentum they had whatsoever today absolutely squashed temple on top and it was crazy really uh, florida atlantic had 384 total yards temple only had 200 it's just the stellar defense came through for him well in this case i think we learned who is the better owl the wheels on the bus go round and round round and round red hawks are up welcome to miami and to me a diagonal arrow is pointing towards western michigan broncos on the move already up by 18 and they want more western michigan may be no bus Buster Bronco, but they sure are busting their way through to the red zone. And I guess the Red Hawks forgot to show up in this one. Fourth and 20, punting it back. And with 19 seconds left, they're punting once again. Yes, this is deja vu. Uh, they get a chance to get the ball back and don't do anything with it. Honestly, to me, it was pretty cut and dry. I think we knew the winner here as soon as we jumped into it. Tracing and the Broncos moving on. From the Arctic cold waters up north, they can now move in to the mainframe. Let's keep spinning it and see who is up next. It's going to be really Western Michigan on the clock already. These guys just proved it. Now they got to prove it again. Team most directly north and to the right-ish is Buffalo. Third and 11. They're trying to leave it all on the line right here. Big play and connection. He's got the first down. The Bronco quarterback drops back. He's looking, surveying, and he sees a bunch of white big defensive lineman in his face the road to a comeback starts with one step and this is a big fourth down step and yeah 
slippery ball. So there you have it. It was all fun and games for the Buffalo Bulls. They're going to move on to the next step. Just patiently waiting their turn. They finally get the opportunity and they make it count. So they got a lot of land, or I'm sorry, I should say water. Speaking of teams that have patience, there still are quite a few we've yet to call and Akron is one of those teams. Zips always get picked on for being pretty bad. Can they come through? The Cinderella run starts with NIU. Well, can we give a round of applause to Akron for at least trying? Akron has already decided not to call any timeouts in this one and they're giving up. So Akron did what Akron does. Unfortunately, they're one and done. Continuing on our conquest, it's going to be Ball State. Cardinals need to go down south. So it's going to be a battle of the birds against the Falcons. Falcons are in the driver's seat, only up by one point, but they're in a good position here to potentially get more. However, for Ball State, they need a stop and a big one. Defense made the play they were needing, and now it's up to the offense. Can they get the first down here? Short by one. Honestly, it should be manageable, and the running back is going to pick it up with a few extra. You can see water splashing up all around these guys on the field, so passing is not usually ideal. Unless your back's pushed up against a wall like these guys, you usually see a lot of handoffs. Just under 30 seconds here. Will they get a few more? They will, so this is a manageable field goal for the win. Job well done by the O. It's up to the kicker, and he's got the chip shot. And would you look at that? Ball State did the thing they had to do, and that was drive down the field and get the dub. So in the battle for bird supremacy, it falls to Ball State. Only four teams left in the MAC, and there's still a good amount in the American. South Florida got the nod in this one, and they're headed straight south for the Roadrunners. Bulls are tripling the Roadrunner production right now in offense, and the quarterback's going to step up, keep it, and score touchdown. At an initial glance, it looked close, but now the Bulls are really starting to pull away. Ready to let it rip. It's just a handoff up the middle that'll do the trick they're up by three touchdowns now it's been a mixture of the rain and the torrid defense from the bulls they are doing a number on them congratulations to the bulls and a big win here they're excited to keep the dream alive and byron brown just had himself a day so i honestly thought the roadrunners would be a tougher out in this imperialism but the bulls are really good winding down the number of teams left buffalo from the mac is putting it on the line only a few teams remain and they're gonna fight the last team that hasn't played yet on the mac side it's ohio bobcats back and forth ball game in this one curtis work and the bobcats want some more points who knew ohio so far away from ocean is actually playing pretty well in the ocean bobcats couldn't play well enough they were settled for three and now look at buffalo just drive their way down the field into the red zone i don't think buffalo has the same luxury of settling for three they have to go for it all right here t minus two minutes another halfback draw and it's too short that last hole was impressive but this one's even bigger stakes and they don't minute 30 here first in goal he's dropping back and he's throwing an absolute boneheaded interception there i don't even know where he was looking and on the final whistle ohio secures it 20 to 14 and they're moving Moving on. Big time to get a big win, and Ohio is now in the forefront and next up it is going back to south florida bulls looking for some more this time charlotte's the name bulls playing some inspired football here up by 19 they're already moving it down into the 10 yards to go south florida honestly just must be used to the rain out there because this is the second time to decisively beat someone and yes i did say beat someone they're up by 19 i'm not holding out hope for charlotte to get their act together uh, because that play was almost a heisman like play they got a little mojo on their side and a good thing going back to throwing that wheel around and the green wave are on the clock where's two lane got to go since the arrows left and south i'm gonna have to go with uab blazers didn't bother showing up in this one as the green wave continue to roll UAB has been honestly content here with running out the clock and on the final play of the game. Yeah, that's an emphasis point for Tulane's defense. UAB wasn't ready. We are getting close to the end of two conferences and really South Florida is getting an awful lot of tests. Will the Bulls continue to ride? Now going for Temple, they want all North and South Ocean control. Man, imperialism is so wacky. I mean, look at the beatdown Temple is giving the Bulls. 41 to three, you're seeing that right. The defense is really good and underrated. Bulls fans, you had a run, but at the end of the day, the Owls are a menace. Still a couple teams hiding in here like Memphis and North Texas, and speak of the Eagles. Mean Green, they are headed up. Another battle of the birds going up against the Owls. Owls looking to pull out their talons and do some extra damage here as they're into the red zone, already up by three. Third and five, he's looking for the end zone, and he steps up to scramble. He has all the time in the world. Oh my goodness. Yet yeah, the guy that fell over trying to sack him still sacks him because he just held onto the ball. 
overall. But any hope for a mean green comeback was short lived as these guys just got destroyed on the defense. Second and goal, another read option. It's unstoppable. Last second chance. Will they get points? The game's over. A clock expires. No points. Nothing to show for it. Congrats to the Temple Owls, man. They're playing some top notch football. And it's surprising to me because in revamped, they are a 75 overall, I believe. As you know, in Imperialism, some teams can get hot. Of the remaining teams, it's headed back to the Huskies. So, in essence, this is the final matchup in the Mac before the championship. And congratulations to Ball State. They've earned a bid in the championship game. Huskies up by 11. Curtis Rourke and the Bobcats need to put in some work. And that run down the sideline is a major one. Will he go all the way? Breaking through two tackles at the end. That was mean. For as cold as that run was, NIU literally answered back in one play. Special teams, special players. So that kind of took the wind out of the Bobcat sails just a little bit. They're going to need to hope for a miracle again. Two touchdowns is the name of the game right now, and they're moving pretty efficiently. So it all comes down to this for Big Curtis, fourth down, and he had a man, just missed him. The rain maybe got in the way. So with that, NIU was able to kneel out the remaining clock and Dolphin there. I just noticed his last name, Dolphin, uh, and Ricky Lombardi get the dub. And with that win, the Huskies are now in control of their fate in the championship game against Ball State. But we'll get to the championship game here in a bit. Let's spin the remaining four American teams. Temple's going to have to go ahead and show them something. Bring on the Pirates. Temple has been on a run this entire imperialism. Now they're playing a team called the Pirates. It makes me wonder if they've ran into a little bit of a kryptonite here because the Pirates have been patrolling the Pacific this entire time, just waiting for the opportunity. And with under two minutes to go, they're going to hand it off, take their time, run a few plays. Third and 11, setting up in the empty here, and Temple defense all over it. Under a minute to go, though, holding the offense to three points was a much-needed stop. EJ Warner and the Owls are moving right down this field after holding the Pirates to three. Now third and 16. You need a big play here, and the offensive lineman actually just hosed him, pushing him into the defender. Not gonna lie, that was a little crazy there on the line. So now it's fourth and 25. He has to get a big one, and I'm not sure why you choose a dump off. Wow, I thought the Owls were on to something this imperialism. They were driving up and down against all their opponents until they met ECU. Yar. Talk about making an entrance here in Imperialism. Pirates swoop in late and get the dub. Massive implications here. It's the East Carolina Pirates and they are going to have to battle. Since I think it's pointing backwards to the left, the closest team's the Tigers. 14 apiece. The Pirates were able to stop the Owls and are they able to stop the Tigers too? Really well done option on that last play and quarterback's not going anywhere this time. With second and goal, he fakes it to the running back and then throws it to him anyway and just gets a few. Huge third down here will they get the six or have to settle for three off his back foot he finds a man but it's all stuffed up memphis has a minute and 20 to make some magic happen here in a deflection at the line that really should have been picked off and that would have been game instead tigers get a second crack at it will they capitalize the slip screen honestly has a low success rate that's a bad call fourth and two this is pretty manageable it's honestly a good time to call the screen in a situation like this but man kobe drake was going nowhere pirates defense holds twice and they stand the test and they're going to the championship game and it's honestly fitting that a pirate is ruling over the Pacific Ocean. And with that, we have two championship games set. Tulane versus ECU, NIU versus Ball State. This is crazy. Here are all four championship bound teams in the wheel determining who goes first and who has home field advantage. Of course, it goes back to the Pirates. So our first championship game on deck here is for the American and it's going to be the Pirates versus Tulane. Like a tidal wave, Tulane's energy is just mounting up and they're looking to cash in. Down by a touchdown, they're looking to turn things around and in a big way. That run was a good one. This is for all of the Pacific Ocean. You have to leave it on the field today. And this is your opportunity in the comment section to let me know what Tulane legends or East Carolina legends do we need to add. On this third and 11, we need to see some heroics and that's a good play going across and he got more than enough. Wow, he slipped his way through. Got them right into first and in goal territory and he's stepping up on his back foot. Somehow finds his man still. Will the wave crash and cash in? You see what I did there? flag though and it looks like it's a defensive penalty so it doesn't matter with a third and 20 looming honestly i thought maybe they could try to hand it off and go to ot but wow that stops the clock and gives tulane a chance one timeout left a first down however stops the clock and that is a huge play across midfield they're gonna have to hurry up to the line 
It's just past the 50. It looks like they're going to snap it quick and get a play off. And yeah, they only burned two, three seconds left. So uh, need another one here. The QB keeps it and time expires. Unbelievable sequence of events. They could have been setting up for a big kick. Instead, it's overtime and Michael Pratt's going to run with authority here. Important third down here. Pratt looking for someone and almost intercepted. Oh boy, the two lane kicker missed it in the rain. And on third, in five just looking for one more big play and might as well just go for the whole touchdown and win this championship outright so it wouldn't have mattered if he made it actually because that touchdown seals it congratulations to the ecu pirates man east carolina representing the american conference and the pacific ocean it's kind of funny that it really turned out to have a pirate represent an ocean so Tulane held on to the very end but it was all in vain because now ecu is the champ but we're not done. We got one more championship matchup, or should I say Mac up, because we're going to the Mac for NIU Ball State. This is to determine home field advantage, and it's going to go to Ball State. We got NIU on the move. It's third and five across the middle. He dropped it, and actually the Ball State receiver is not going to come down with it. The MAC championship, NIU, Ball State, fourth and one. He's got it. With two minutes left, the Huskies are in fast-paced tempo, and they need any points they can get. Ball State up by 11, so it's a two-possession game, and man, the rain is really kicking in. Third and three. He's stepping back at midfield here. He's got a man, so it's going to keep it going. Rocky Lombardi's had his moments throughout this Imperial him. He's going to need another spectacular one here. What will he do right here, right now? He's got an open receiver. That's going to punish the defender and throw another guy off him. Wow. If he scored on that, that was a special pass and catch. And now the handoff's going to get him six. Don't count out the Huskies quite yet as their defense holds fourth down. All out of timeouts. They're in a mad dash to get into field goal range here. Can't afford to take a big sack or nothing. And he went for it all there. I didn't hate his decision to do that there. Now you're just forced to deal with far less time and exactly what you did not want to happen a sack so tabian woodard and ball state really looking to close in on this mac championship and that spiked ball stops the clock okay husky nation are you ready oh no that is a painful way to go out you do a half pack draw i'm beside myself Oh, brother, that is a embarrassing way to go out of imperialism. And with that result, NIU is no more. Ball State is your MAC champion representing the Atlantic Ocean. So I need you all right now in the comment section, let me know what two campus legends from Ball State, that's right, Ball State, offense, defense, will join the team. And the same could be said for the Pirates, an offense and defense legend. And folks, do you realize what this means? We have finished the final battles for Atlantic, Pacific Ocean. All the continent victors are determined. So we have our final eight teams ready to compete in all-out world war. Who's ready and who's soaking it up? Because if you are like I am, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll catch y'all in the next.